we have done backlist authors that I need to read. We have done modern trad pub authors that I need to read. It is time to dive in to self pub and indie authors that I still need to read. Hello everyone, welcome or welcome back to A Fictional Escapist. My name is Chris and today's video is part one of two of indie slash self-pub authors that I still need to read. There are many, many more than 20, but I had to limit it to 20 that are pretty much at the top of my radar when I go to pick up the next self-pub or the next indie book. Otherwise, I will never read all the books that I want to read and look, that's, that's pretty much a risk of my life and any reader's life at this point, is it not, that we just won't get through them. But I do have 20 self-pub authors that are really high on my radar, and we're going to start with the first 10 today. Before we jump into it, make sure you check in the description box down below for links to my social media and Discord, should you want to come along for the ride. Now again, I'm going to apologize for the lighting in this video. It is evening and the light is going down. I just ran out of time today. We're going to do it anyway and just do what we can with the equipment that we have. So this list today, I have got 10 uh, for you. I own some physical books. I don't own a lot of these. Most of these will be on my Kindle, Kindle Unlimited, all that sort of stuff. So we'll just go through them. Starting us off strong is going to be J.E. Hannaford. This is the Black Hinds Wake duology. I do happen to have these beautiful hard copy editions of the skin and the pack. Some of my favorite covers in the game. The pack may be my favorite cover, of the last couple of years. It is just a very, very beautiful book. This one says, you cannot fix this world alone, Selkie. I know, but when we die, all that's left are shadows of our lives preserved in the memories of those who remain. I plan on leaving an exceptionally long shadow filled with ripples of moonlight for those I helped and darker than the worst of nightmares for those who wronged us. How far would you go to save your skin? I am a Selkie. Trapped above the waves until I can recover my skin, humans used to call us seal wives many years ago before they broke the planet. Up here, the magic is fading and old ones like me are traded as trophies for rich and powerful humans to display in collections. Without the old ones, the magic fades. Without magic, the planet dies. Humankind has gone too far and someone has to put a stop to it. I just wasn't expecting it to be me. Sounds fantastic. Uh, very high on my list. It may end up being a 2024 read for me because it is a duology. We love a duology. Two books, uh, nice and short to get this one under my belt. We'll see. We'll see if it happens this year, but it is a potential. The next one on this list is Ben Galley, someone who has many books out at this point, but I'm going to, ch I'm going to be starting specifically with the Chasing Graves trilogy. Now, I have all three of these on Kindle. I just have the first one here physically, and this one says, Meet. Caltro Basalt. He's a master locksmith, a selfish bastard, and as of his first night in Arax Araxis, stone cold dead. They call it the city of countless souls, a colossal jewel of the Arctian Empire, and all it takes to be its ruler is to own more ghosts than any other. For in Araxis, the dead do not rest in peace in the afterlife, but live on as slaves to the rich. That sounds really cool. While Caltro struggles to survive, those around him strive for the Emperor's throne in Araxis' cutthroat game of power. The dead gods whisper from corpses, a soul stealer seeks to make a name for himself with the help of an ancient cult. A princess plots to purge the Emperor from his armored sanctuary, and a murderer drags a body across the desert, intent on reaching Araxis, no matter the cost. One, only one thing is certain in Araxis, death is just the beginning. That sounds very cool. I'm very excited to read this series, uh, and it is fairly high on my list. I also own quite a few of the Emanesca series by Bengali, but we'll probably start with that one there. Now, the first one I don't have physically is The Cruel Gods by True Skies, and this one starts with the 13th hour, which I'll pop up in the corner here. This is a series that has been on my radar for a very long time since it was in Spiffbo, and I've just heard nothing but good things about this series for my particular tastes. It says, when the saints fall, the sinners step up. Cruel gods rule the steam-powered city of Chime, demanding worship and tribute from their mortal subjects. Kaol lost her faith in them long ago and now seeks to protect vulnerable and downtrodden mortals from their gods' whims. But when Kaol discovers powers that she didn't know she had and destroys a mortal soul by accident, she becomes Chime's most wanted. Hopefully I'm pronouncing that correctly. I'm not sure. Quen's job was to pursue sinners until the visions started. Haunted by foreboding images of his beloved city's destruction, Quen hunts soul-sucking creatures made of Aether who prey 
on its citizens, and Kale is his number one target. To ensure Tribe's future, Kale and Quen must discover the truth of Kale's divine abilities before the gods take matters into their own hands. For a city that bows to cruel gods, it'll take a godless it'll take godless heathens to save it. Again, another book which just sounds friggin' fantastic by the blurb and something that's been on my radar for a very, very long time. The next one we have here is The Dreadbound Ode by Jordan Loyal Short. I have a bit of a story behind this series. I very vainly, when I got onto the booktube scene and I was just buying up big, buying so many books that I couldn't keep up with, I saw book three on Rob J. Hayes' blog that comes out to talk about new books that are coming out. And I bought book three because the book three cover is fantastic and it's green and I'm such a sucker for green, which we know by now. Then I had to go and buy book one and two because I didn't realize my mistake. So I now have the whole series, which is why it's pretty high up on this list. This one says, also, I just want to point out this moon skull thing. These covers are next level. When a soldier's murder sparks rebellion in the tiny village of Skoya, Bros past marks him as the prime suspect. Haunted by his brother's ghost and drawn into a web of dark packs and tangled loyalties, Bro must choose between the path of vengeance set before him and a chance to forge his own fate. From the shadows, an all but extinct race of alien demigods have begun the end game of their millennia spanning war, and ha- one has chosen Bro for his closing gambit. But Bro's grandfather harbors a dark secret that will change everything. Above it all, a dread portent looms in the sky, spelling the death of Bro's world. I probably not pronounced that correctly. With doom spiraling towards them, Bro must lead an unlikely rebellion, unearth disturbing family secrets, and tame the raging ghost that haunts him. Can Bro lead his people out of darkness, or will he succumb to his own terrifying bloodlust and destroy the very people he has been sworn to save? Doesn't that sound cool? Sounds pretty cool. Sounds pretty cool to me. The next one is a series I've owned for quite a long time on my Kindle, and this is Pax Arcane and Otherwise, Parts Arcane and Otherwise, by Joanna Macy Juska, and it starts with By the Pact, which I'll put up here. This is a series which I'm very much looking forward to getting to. It is a completed full book series. Each book comes in at around, I think, 300 to 350 pages, so nice and short. Get a full series, and I'm very excited in both this series and the one that the author is currently writing. This one says, Hi, Mages Lied. Varen Esh, oh, pronunciation, Chris, sorry about that. The demon who destroyed the continent is still alive, and it's up to their former students to expose the truth, even if it means another cataclysm. When Kamira, a once high mage student turned arcanist, discovers an imprisoned demon in the underground ruins, she is forced into a pact that grants her powerful magic, but also ties her to the very demon that once devastated the continent. And Varanesh wants his freedom. I'm getting the War Eternal vibes, and I am here for it. With one friend by her side, Valik, a mage killer bound on protecting her, Kamira will have to outwit, outwit the Archmages, other demons, and possibly her own demonic benefactor to survive. Her chances are slim, but with Velk's ever-present sarcastic repartee, Kamira might p- just pull through. Plots and schemes, power and means, sometimes the price for victory is choosing which friend will die, but when you only have one friend, the choice is easy, question mark. It sounds fantastic. I've really been drawn to this series for a little while now, and I'm hoping to get to it sooner rather than later. Speaking of sooner rather than later, we have P.L. Stewart's The Drowned Kingdom, starting with A Drowned Kingdom, book number one. The more I hear about this series, the more I need to read it. It was meant to be something I read this year, and I haven't picked it up yet. It's been a lot of beta reading, a lot of alpha reading going on this year, which I love and do have to take priority but I really do want to get to the series. Once second prince of the mightiest kingdom in the known world, Orthron now leads the last survivors of his exiled people into an uncertain future across the shimmering sea from their ancestral home now lost beneath the waves. A single god binding his knights to chivalric oaths intent on wiping out idolatry, I'm going to have to look that word up, and pagan worship, they will have to carve out a new kingdom on this mysterious continent, a continent that has for centuries been ravaged by warlords competing for supremacy and mages channeling the mystic powers of the elements and unite the continent under godly rule. With a troubled past, a cursed sword, and a mysterious spirit guiding him, Orthron means to be that ruler and conquer all. But with kingdoms fated on the edge of spears, alliances and pagan magic, betrayal, doubt, and dangers await him at every turn. Orthron will be forced to confront the truth of all he believes in on his journey to become a king a legend. When one kingdom drowns, a new one must rise in its place. 
So begins the saga of that kingdom and the man who would rule it all. All these books sound so good. I'm going to have so much trouble picking uh, which ones come with me into the 2025 read list. The next one I have is going to annoy people (laughs) that I have not read it yet, and that is going to be M.L. Spencer's Dragon Mage. Now, I think I think this is a series, Rivenworld, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, it says Rivenworld on the other screen here. I know I need to read this series. I have it on audio and on my Kindle, and I just don't know when I'm going to get to it, but it is it is high up there on books that I need to read. It says, Aram Wraith has the power to challenge the gods. He just doesn't know it yet. Aram thinks he's nothing but a misfit from a small fishing village in a dark corner of the world. As far as Aram knows, he has nothing, with hardly a possession to his name other than the desire to make friends and be accepted by those around him, which is something he's never known. But Aram is more, much, much more. Unknown to him, Aram bears within him a gift so old and rare that many people would kill him for it, and there are others who would twist him to use for their own sinister purposes. These magics are so potent that Aram earns a place at an academy for warrior mages trained to earn for themselves the greatest place of honour among the armies of men, dragon riders. Aram will have to fight for respect by becoming not just a dragon rider, but a champion, the calibre of mage that hasn't existed in the world for hundreds of years, and the land needs a champion, because when a dark god out of ancient myths arises to threaten the world of magic, it is Aram the world will turn to in its hour of need. I think this book puts me off only because of its sheer size. It is a chonk at like 920 pages but i know i need to read it i I love the representation in it and i'm just gonna have to suck it up i'm just gonna have to suck it up get over my fear of big books because there's lots of them on this list and lots of authors who write big books the next one that i have here is harman cooper with the pilgrim series which is a series which has been on my radar for a very long time almost since i came onto the platform and this one just says, says a former assassin, a new beginning, an unspeakable past. Abandoned at birth and raised to be an assassin by the mysterious DU Brotherhood, Danzen R- Raja has had enough of the life of a contract killer. After completing his disastrous last assignment, he slips away to the remote Genshin Valley, hoping to disappear for good. Once he reaches Suja Village, Danzen does his best to keep his identity a secret. He eventually becomes known as Pilgrim by the locals after he takes shelter in an abandoned monastery which he plans to rebuild, but his troubled past quickly catches up with him. At the direction of his former teacher, the Brotherhood has put a hit on Danzen that has every assassin in the kingdom after him, which would be bad in itself if it weren't for his dark secret. Danzen Raja is a half-demon, and if he spills even a single drop of blood, he unleashes a horde of demons who will stop at nothing to kill Danzen and anyone he holds dear. That sounds violent and fun. Maybe not for Danzen. But uh, it's a series that's been on my radar for a very long time. Speaking of series I desperately need to get to, it's time to talk about Natalie Kelder's Inner Universe Duology. This starts with A River in the Galaxy, and I know there are more books in this world, but I believe you can read the first two books, and then there are other books that consequently go on in the series, but I will be reading them in publication order just to be safe, and it starts with River in the Galaxy. It says, when Merlin's parents disappeared, his world fell apart. When his best friend died, he lost the ability to enjoy life. For Captain Merlon Ricosa, Lania's death two years prior feels like yesterday. But when a map from his parents is discovered, he decides to push aside his grief to get closure and follow the route they vanished along 18 years ago. Despite political trouble, Merlon leads his crew into the unknowns of strange galaxies in his quest to find out why his parents never returned. In River in the Galaxy, Merlon fights to keep his crew alive and suppress his prolonged grief and depression, but he must face his own struggles in order to protect the ship and the people aboard. This one is riddled with uh, mental health representation. I believe it's queer normative in the world, and I'm very much looking forward to reading some of Natalie Kelder's work. And the last one on the list today is an author we all know and love and have heard about many, many times in the self-pub scene, and that is Andy Peliquin. But I'm not looking to start with his Dark Blade series, which a lot of people do go into as the starting point. I'm looking to start with Cerberus, which is a 12-book sci-fi series starting with Assassination Protocol. It says, Nolan Garrett is Cerberus, a government assassin tasked with fixing the galaxy's darkest, ugliest problems with a bullet to the brain. Armed with cutting-edge weapons and an AI-run cybernetic suit that controls his paralyzed legs, he is the first in the shadows, a dagger to the heart of the Nazarian Empire's enemies. I think I pronounced that wrong. 
we'll move on. Then he found Bex on his doorstep, a junkie high on the drug he'd fought for years to avoid, and a former elite soldier like him. So he takes her in to help her get clean. Silver guards never leave their own behind. If only he'd known his actions would put him in the crosshairs of the most powerful cartel in New Avalon. Facing an army of gangbangers, drug pushers, and thugs, Nolan must fight not only to carry out his mission, but to prevent the escalating violence from destroying everything he loves. Cerberus Assassination Protocol is a riveting, heart-pounding first book in an epic military sci-fi Cerberus series. This one sounds fantastic. I am getting a little bit more into sci-fi, so I thought it might be a nice breakup uh, to a lot of the fantasy that we have on this list. But those are my first 10 indie self-pub authors that I really need to get to. There is going to be a second part to this series where I go through another 10 because there are just so many that I want to read. Are there any on this list that you think I really need to prioritize? Let me know in the comments down below. If you like the content, give one of those. If you want to see more of it, click subscribe at your will, and I will catch you in the next video. Ciao.